Hello, I'm Jocelyn Metzger with Sunshine Therapeutics and the Voyage to Heal, and I have the honor of um, getting to speak with my good friend and someone I admire greatly and feel very connected to spiritually, um, Tammy Reed, who teaches Kundalini Yoga. She's been a part of Sunshine Therapeutics and our weekend excursion, and she's primarily at Main Street Yoga in Wilmington, Ohio, and um, is doing her classes virtually right now, and I'm sure she'll be anxious to get back in person later on this week. Um, I had the delight to experience Kundalini Yoga firsthand last summer, and it was just so powerful and shifting for me and connecting me more with, with spirit and more with thinking positively and living in love. And so I... I became passionate because of what Tammy was bringing to my life um, through Kundalini Yoga. So I ask that today she share more of what is Kundalini Yoga, how did, how, what are the origins, what is a class like, and how she was drawn to it, um, and how it has shifted her life. So, the amazing Tammy Reed. <laughs> Hi, Jocelyn. Thank you having me. Um, this is one of my favorite topics to chat about. And, um, you know, I, I really like how you kind of wove in. Um, it, it has been quite the personal journey for me. But how you mentioned before, I think before you hit record, that um, it's, it, it's something that once you experienced it, you knew it was kind of what you were looking for. Mm -hmm. And that's the experience I had. So I was um, into yoga, Hatha yoga, probably, um, I think it was right around when my, um, right after my daughter was born. I had heard of yoga before, but really hadn't, um, hadn't experienced it, had never been to a class. Um, and right around after my daughter was born, I thought I'd give it a try. I was looking for a way to kind of get out in the world a little bit and to move, move my body and to get back in shape after pregnancy. Um, but it was always about, it was always for me less about um, my physical body and, and, and what, um, what I can, you know, what postures I can maneuver my body in and more for connection so but i didn't realize at the time but i that that's what i was always kind of going for was this this feeling of connection and the the ability to weave in all the different pieces of my life in this one practice so when so i were when you I, starting off with the connection of self or a connection to a higher power like deepening your spirituality and, you know, I know for me, when I had my girls, my life went into a bit of that chaos and I was looking for that return to myself and looking for that, that deeper spiritual connection. Which one was it for you or was it a little bit of both? Honestly, I have to say a little bit of both. Um, I was brought up in, um, it, a, a, the Jewish tradition, and 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 we, you know, we we did go to temple on the high holidays. We did um, go, you know, I went to Sunday school and such. But I never, um, well, that's not true. Um, I in the in the building, I've never felt a a connection, and and I guess I couldn't explain whether it was necessarily a connection just to self or a connection to spirit. I think it was just connection in general that I was searching for. And um, yoga and Hatha yoga, even though it wasn't the Kundalini yet, really touched, I could, I could sense, you know, where, where you just feel it's right, where you just mm -hmm. feel like, ah, <laughs> you know, something <laughs> is, um, that's what I felt. Um, so, you know, that's kind of, it's because I think a lot of times when we do have children, um, we do kind of lose ourselves. Like, what is it that um, allows me to, what is my unique ability to kind of make a difference in this world when it, beyond just being a mother, 
because we're, you know, we're so many more, we're, we're so much more than just one facet, right? Mm -hmm. We're mother, we're, we're, um, healer. Um, but, but what are those things that kind of connect all those things together? Again, that word connection, mm -hmm. um, that's what I think in an intuitive way I was feeling through yoga. So um, I, tra I, I traveled on this journey of kind of learning my way through Hatha yoga for quite a while. And I'll specifically, I remember the day that I was turned on to Kundalini yoga. It was on, it was on an online platform and it was a Hatha yoga teacher that was just inviting some Kundalini exercises into the practice. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> this is is different and this is good and this feels right and it, I feel like just my my journey just kind of accelerated from there wow. you know it's interesting how in life there are certain moments that you know something is introduced to us and it instantly clicks and I can say I remember being in OT school and we had like one day, one class, and they talked about myofascial release. And instantly I thought, I want to learn that. You know, it wasn't until, let's see, that was 98, 97. So like, you know, almost 10 years later that I finally took a course, but it, it, it imprinted in my mind that, oh, I'm supposed to do this. I want to do this. So... I, I can understand that you you got a taste of it and knew that was that was what you needed. And what Absolutely. was it that drew you towards the Kundalini Yoga? What was it that your heart just felt? Wow, this is this is what I need. So at the time, I don't know if I could have necessarily put my finger on it. Um, now, as I look back, I just think. I knew that it had so much more of a deeper, rich experience to it. Um, one thing that, you know, Kundalini Yoga takes in all these different facets. So it's not just about the asana um, or the, you know, the physical movements, but it takes in the breath work prana, uh, your pranic body. It takes in um, mantra, which is chanting um, certain frequencies so you can connect in a higher way. Um, it's, it's a lifestyle. It can be a lifestyle. It can be, it's, it's a surrendering your, your, um, your head to your heart. Um, so it's not, um, it's not letting go of the head, you know, and, and, and the, the gifts our, our, our head, <laughs> our thinking mind has to give us, but it's allowing the heart to have a platform. Um, so it's so many different facets um, that come together. And I think that's what appealed to me where again, it, it was just like, I understood just this minuscule amount and it wasn't even an understanding that I could have articulated. It was more of an experience that I was just like, I want more of this. So, um, you know, I tend to, when I find that thing and I know it's right, I, I, I always knew that I wanted to get certified to teach yoga. And this is where I finally found my place. And this is where, so in 2010, I started a certification program and then I graduated in 2011. So, um, I'm not sure if that exactly answered your question, but I, you know, again, it was, it was not something that I could probably articulate at the time. It's more of a looking back and kind of an understanding over yeah. time. No, I, I definitely understand that. So now, you know, you have, you have an incredible class that you teach and I love the teachings that um, Yogi Bhajan, um, you know, brings forth that you just examinerate in your class. And so can you share with me a little bit more about, you know, what is the core concepts of kundalini yoga and what is 
Kundalini. And I'm going to have you start talking. And I just realized my internet connection, it said I'm sort of, um, it's not stable. So I'm going to bring my, my little remote thing right by. So I'm going to be able to hear you. And I'm going to have you start telling me just a bit about the core concepts and what is Kundalini as I quick run and grab that. <laughs> so okay. you talk, I'll be right back. Okay. So to, to bring it all down to a very simple explanation, Kundalini is the science of human consciousness. So it's about being able to be conscious of our habit patterns, become conscious of our thoughts, became, become conscious of um, the, way we, the way we move, um, and utilize the tools that have been given through the different uh, masters of Kundalini Yoga to be able to find our, um, our potential. So Kundalini is basically the potential that resides in each one of us. So it's this understanding that it doesn't come from outside, that we all have this potential that it is said to reside at the base of the spine um, and through moving our bodies through um, mixing what's known as um, the pranic and the pranic energy which is the expansive energy as well as the aponic energy which is the eliminative energy so if you think of life as this dance between um, relieving and getting rid of that which we no longer need right that eliminative aponic energy and that expansive moving towards what we're ready to kind of um to own up to that it is part of us um so actually moving the body breathing the breath uh, chanting the mantra and gathering that energy right at what's known as the solar plexus area. So there's a, there's a series, a, 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 a lot of nerve ganglia that resides right here at the nerve plexus area. So we're actually creating a fire, like creating um, um, a, a culmination, an alchemy here, and it helps to um, move the energy up the spine, the central nerve channel. So we, we, we get the higher glands secreting. So it's about getting the, the higher glands secreting. So we're able to connect to our higher self, um, our pineal, our, our pituitary gland, all kind of set off hormones within us, a cascade of hormones. And that's the idea that we can feel expansive. So we're able to recognize the connection between ourselves rather than feeling the small, small, you know, piece of ourselves. So when, when we're in fear mode, when we're in, um, um, uh, you know, a, a mode that we're kind of curling inside, it's hard to see how we connect to the bigger world, the you know, other humans, the the earth and such. But once we get those hormones secreting, we we start to realize, ah, there is some kind of connection here. Mm -hmm. So we utilize that that kundalini. That's what that is. That 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 disbursement of the energy up the spine, so it can kind so it can start to um um get those those higher glands thing and then we begin to meditate then we begin to sit with it and to recite mantra so when we when we hit the outside world or our daily lives we're able to continue to exist in a higher frequency so we don't get pulled down so quickly Okay. Right. So that, that restriction is separation, whereas, you know, connection is expansion. Uh, and that is when you feel alone, it's because you've separated yourself. So 
it's bringing everything back together as you you said from the very beginning connection it's all about that connection and you know a class is it, i can now as you explain that i can understand the flow of the class and with all the movements there's one very very powerful saying that that is consistently repeated sat nam and that is the connection the i am can you talk tell me a little bit more about that yeah so sat nam literally translates as um, sat is truth nam is identity or vibration but even more than that because you know words really are insufficient to um you know they're just a small piece of what what it what sat nam actually um vibrates what frequency it is so it's it's about that connection sat nam and it's all about the breath because at the at the very basis of all of this we are connected through our breath we are connected to all there is through our breath on this earth you know on this earth mm -hmm. so as you breathe in you can almost hear a sut sut and as you breathe out you can almost hear that nom, nom. And you are actually embodying, you are embracing the sat nom, the truth of who you are. So the more you invite the breath in, the more you connect to sat nom rather than connecting to the lower frequencies that the brain um, may, may unconsciously or subconsciously connect to, you're training your mind to hear that sat nam, that truth. And so that is why when you do a movement such as the one that comes to mind is having your hands here and you rotate left on the inhale and think sat, exhale, nam to the right, sat, nam. And I know those were, there's a lot of repetitive movement in the Kundalini Yoga and there's also time frames of how long you complete each, each movement. And I understand like repetitiveness, you're, you're retraining the brain, you're creating those new highways, the time factor. So how, you know, how do you determine, you know, if it's one minute, if it's three minutes, if it's 11 minutes more, where is, where did those, those time uh, parameters come in? Right. So I, you know, personally, this is, I, I do not determine those. They have all been, um pass down these kriyas which um kriya is a um it translates as an action so when we do a kriya and let's say we're doing an action like this um there are certain times that have been given to us and us as practitioners of kundalini yoga um that are times that are able to um time frames that are able to bring about a certain effect in the body so let's say um you know a kriya that was given that was passed down through yogi bhajan um you know three minutes on one exercise two and a half minutes on another one and a half on another um so my job as a kundalini yoga teacher is not to change the kriya in any way i can um i can br bring down the times so um but they all need to stay proportional so again these times are important because they have certain effects in our body so for example we often meditate for um 21 minutes 30 31 minutes 62 minutes and each one of these has a different effect in our body so one may be you know our nervous system begins to settle um another may be that um our pineal pituitary gland connection begins to take hold um there's all these different time frames that allow us to have a deeper and deeper experience um, as we go through not only the movements, but also the meditations that we do in Kundalini Yoga.
Okay. And I know, you know, as I mentioned with the class, it starts off with the physical repetitive movements. And then uh, I remember we do mudras, um, the, the different hand positions that, you know, connecting with the universe and their energy. And, you know, can you tell us a little bit more about mudras and, um, you know, how those may have come about, what they're, what they're for, that may be a word a lot of people have heard, but they don't know. Right. Right. So, um, okay, sorry. No. Um, so mudras are basically, you're utilizing different energy, um, like you said, of the universe. So within the hand, um, comprise different, different fingers comprise different en energy. So for example, the thumb is symbolic of our ego, our personal ego. So all the things. No. <laughs> I'm right. Thumbs up. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> and th this is important. We went to lose sight of the personal ego, right. but not everything, right? We, we, we need to have some kind of balancing point here. Yeah. So then we move to the Jupiter finger. And the Jupiter finger has an expansive energy. It's the energy that allows us to move beyond just our small self and expand into wisdom. So this is called Gyan Mudra, and it's the mudra of wisdom. Okay. So it embodies not just knowledge, it's not just what we can know here, mm -hmm. it's a greater wisdom. Okay. And then we've got the Saturn finger, the middle finger, which is okay. kind of the master a little bit it's all about discipline and commitment which is really it gets kind of a bad rap right but without it we aren't able to practice the technology the science of yoga in order to be able to connect so we have to have that commitment piece you know we have to have control over our impulses and our our mind that wants to say, no, I don't want to get out of bed or no, I don't need to do this today. We need to have some sort of commitment. Now that doesn't have to look, it doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to look like two and a half hours of meditation in a day. It just needs to be some sort of commitment to it, to the journey. And, and, and the more you commit, the more you, you say, ah, now I realize why I'm committing. We have this saying in Kundalini Yoga, um, keep up and you'll be kept up. And so Yogi Bhajan was really big on that. So the more, it's kind of like the more you think about, if you think about mantra, the more you put that out there, that frequency, the more you're going to get it back. So keep up and you'll be kept up. Um, this is the sun finger. So this is like our energy our um our spark right there our sun energy if you think about action moving forward the masculine that's sun energy and then this is our mercury finger which is all about communication okay and basically we're utilizing fingers to symbolize different things and we put them in different mudras that kind of bring the energy or the flavor. Sometimes I use energy, that word energy a lot, and I think it can get confusing, but it's kind of like you're, you're drawing in the uh, essence of these different planets, of these different um, um, celestial kind of, kind of um, energy, while well, I'm using the word energy again, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> placing them in different places and you're sitting with them and you let them kind of become you. So it's like channeling again, through you, exactly. moving, change, shifting that vibration and bringing the, bringing that vibrational frequency into you um, so that it's a part of that manifestation. Totally. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. It's so, just, and then, and as you, you hold the mudras, there's always a, a chance that you go along with. And what is the, the role of the chant? Is it to get the, 
feeling, the vibrational feeling in you, as well as hearing it auditorily, like what, because that is one of the different, biggest differentiating things that I noticed too with the Kundalini Yoga, um, amongst a lot of other things. And I was having a conversation with another yoga instruction and she instructor, and she said, "Well, why why do you like Kundalini Yoga?" And I was like, "I love to chant." She's like, "I hate chanting." <laughs> I'm like, but that's my favorite part. And so that, and I know that is a, a significant part of Kundalini yoga. Why? So the short answer is it's an alignment. Okay. One more tool in the toolbox of which Kundalini is to help you align. Um, so if you think about it, we're constantly chanting. We're constantly chanting thoughts inside our head, right? We're constantly, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of it is based on our subconscious, unconscious thought pattern, right? So, for example, um, I can catch myself thinking, um, oh crap, you know, I didn't prepare enough for this class. And, 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 and that goes, that strings mm -hmm. on a whole string of thoughts and then I might be all the way to I might somehow for, get all the way to um, oh I forgot to put the laundry in today you, you know in the dryer and, and I didn't realize right so if you think about it we're constantly chanting we're constantly vibrating things and since we're made up of um, upwards of 70 percent sometimes some people say even more than that of water right within our bodies that is what we pulsate that's what we become well mantra and chanting is allowing ourselves to come become something different become aligned with a higher frequency so we train ourselves to align Okay. And what I was always, first you begin to chant the mantra, and then the mantra begins you over time. Which is true, and I never thought of our thoughts as a chant. You know, often when I think of a chant, I'm, I'm thinking of a, a, a singing, you know, melodic type tune, and I know that some people don't like to sing, and so chanting could you know, they could shy away from it because I don't want to sing. I don't, I don't want to, but that, as you were saying, it dawned on me that just our everyday thoughts of the things I didn't do and the things I have to do. And those negative thought patterns are a, a constant chat that you could do. You could chant a mantra, mantra without even singing, uh, you know, just that repetitive phrase going through your mind over and over and over almost like you know filling your filling your cup with with positive you know loving thoughts and you know which are going to push out those negative ones and that's the so that's the main gist the main purpose of the chanting absolutely the mantra just means a mind wave ah okay to align with, with and that's where the comes in and you know it's funny Jocelyn because I've never been, I've never been a singer um, you happen to have a absolutely gorgeous voice <laughs> not something that I grew up doing or feeling like I was particularly good at it or, or, or even average at singing it's not something that's been part of my life but chanting is not singing I mean, it, you, of course, you utilize, the, you know, you utilize the vocal cords. It's still an auditory experience, but it's not about... Um, Did you get the right note? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, you know, that being said, um, there is a technology to it and a science to it. So if you can try to get towards, you know, the right you know, the right rhythm of the mantra, great. Um, but it's all about leaning in the direction. And ultimately, you'll, as you settle into chanting, you'll find your own inner rhythm. Yeah. And it is fascinating, too, when you're in a group, 
how when you first start there, you may not all be on that same page, but the longer you do it, the more connected everybody gets. And what I love about it is the vibration that yeah. as, as you are chanting these mantras, you feel that resignation through your body. It's like your souls are shifting and changing. And that, that to me, it's, you know, it's the internal change versus the external movements of what, whatever you're doing is so, so incredibly powerful. And then you end the classes most often with the playing of the gong which once again it's shifting that that vibrational frequency and is that i you know is that something very typical of a kundalini yoga class that at the the end of the class there is the the gong meditation which was so amazing at our weekend excursion that we had last january and you know towards the end of that there was you played the gong and i could have laid there and my mind was so clear and was so at peace just feeling that vibration that when you stopped playing you did it it just kept reverberating through and it was one of my favorite parts of the weekend excursion but is that is that something specific to to you or is that you know part of a a traditional kundalini yoga class yeah so it is traditional yoga class um yogi bhajan um generally with most classes had the gong um now you will find kundalini yoga classes that the teachers don't play the gong again it's just one piece of the 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 technology um but it is a piece that i found when i started teaching probably the first five six years i i didn't have a gong um and i got to the point that as my practice deepened and as my desire to kind of offer the entire experience of what a kundalini yoga class could be to 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 my students i i did um I was able to purchase a gong and it has been a huge, um, I just think an enrichment to the class. Um, the, the, again, the, the gong um, is a lot like mantra in the way that it aligns you with a vibration. Now the beauty of the gong is, is you, it, 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 Yogi Bhajan always said that your thoughts have no chance against, against the gong. So even you know, if you describe yourself as a type A personality, which a lot of people who are, who are um, drawn to Kundalini Yoga, um, just do describe themselves as type A personalities. You know, I'm always thinking, I'm always, you know, I'm always formulating, I'm always researching, you know, just all these things it has the capacity to just kind of cut through all that. And that's the beauty of it. If you can get your thought pattern, art patterning, your habitual thought patterning, just quiet down and then listen to the sound of the universe. And that's what the gong is supposed to, you know, it's not an instrument, not just an instrument. It's a spiritual tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I would agree with that. <laughs> I would most definitely agree with that. And, you know, I've noticed in my own professional career, it's very similar to your experience with the Kundalini Yoga and the flow of the Kundalini Yoga class, where we do start off with the awareness of the physical body. And then there's this progression along the way of becoming, you know, in touch with your spirit and then in touch with your soul and in touch with that higher power, just allowing your mind to clear and to be guided as opposed to a forced pursuit. And, and that is, you know, to me, I think of the, the progression of starting off with the physical movements and then going into the, the mudras um, and the, you know, and the, the chanting and then being at peace, just allowing that vibration to come through to you and have your mind clear and it is just a, an amazing journey it truly is 
Jocelyn, it, you know, when you, when you kind of spoke to that, I was reminiscing back to when you did a session with me and I absolutely felt all those elements. It's like you were the vessel, you, 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 the, the teacher or, or, or the practitioner, the healer were the, you know, you kind of moved out of the way and you were the vessel to empower me to do what Needed. You know, it started very physical and we were talking and then eventually it got to this place where we didn't need to talk. We were just moving together and then we were kind of connecting on a spirit level and then my body kind of did what it needed to do. So it had all those elements, it's just what it is in Kundalini Yoga. I'm not, you know, there is, a, it's not about finding the teacher or the healer outside of yourself ultimately you want to you want to my job is to have you realize that it's within you and i think that that's how i felt you know that's definitely how i felt in one of your sessions as well oh well, i appreciate that it, you know uh, healing it doesn't matter how healing happens as long as it happens and that is something i've read from alan cohen in his book of course of miracles made easy you know now it's been about four years ago and it's so true that for me my catalyst was starting as an occupational therapist and then a myofascial release therapist and studying the course of miracles and now finding kundalini yoga and you know your path has has gone along a route that has led you you and i both to the same place of right. such a more enriched way of living that is feeding our soul and um it, it's peace and it, it's heaven here and it's like it doesn't matter how it happens as long as it does happen and so that's why i love this opportunity to talk about kundalini yoga that it may resonate you know with with somebody who's listening it may not but it, it is they're all just extra tools for us all to get to the same place and just as you heard kundalini yoga and it snapped and said i need to learn this and i heard myofascial release and it snapped and said yes i need to do this hopefully the more people know all of the the tools that are out there they will find they will find what resonates with them to help guide them to living that higher level of frequency so that we all connect and we realize how connected we truly are. And, you know, I've heard it over and over that this virus that is out, the coronavirus is showing us how incredibly connected we are. And hopefully the connection of love and light and support and understanding overrides the fear. And having tools of this sort, uh, both what you do and what I do and joining them it does raise that vibration of love more than fear. So, Absolutely. So That's all comes down to sure. just finding the truth. Yeah. Right. Finding the truth of, of what is inside of us. And that is where you have taught me in the Kundalini yoga. It is always classes are ended by saying that now the truth. May we, we all live in the truth and, and I thank you for that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that we're, that we're seeing it within the other person because we are all reflective of one another. Yes. So, absolutely. Yes. So, well, thank you, Tammy. This has been very educational, enlightening, and I appreciate your time and all the all that you bring to the world. And look forward to your next class. As I told people before, um, you know, right now on Tuesday evenings when the universe allows 6 p.m. <laughs> uh, virtually. And if you're interested, I, I'll put your information at the bottom of the screen, Tammy, for them to email you and uh, receive the, the link. And hopefully Main Street Yoga is opening up again on uh, May 26th, I believe. So that would have been yesterday, right? <laughs> or two days ago, Tuesday. Um, so virtually or live, I encourage everybody to, to try it out and, and experience it. So. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you. All right. That now. <laughs> oh.